there are very few craft beer brands that are able to go national and be relevant. A few of those brands are able to succeed across the country, but not many. Most of the time, the farther away you go, there's another revolution there. Beer. Who wants to play Drink the Beer? Right here. You need to be old enough to drink it and approved in order to sell approved. it. Approved. But it can be found anywhere, with over 9,000 breweries in the U.S. alone. The market size value of the beer industry was over $730 billion in 2022, with Revolution Brewing the top 1% of breweries, led by Josh Deep, founder and CEO of Revolution Brewing. Well, first off, like I identify more as like an entrepreneur, business, startup kind of person. Revolution Brewing, a company that I founded. Revolution is the largest independent brewery in Illinois. What's happened in craft beer is the greatest example of small business growth and the American dream realized that happened in my lifetime. What was happening in craft beer is a craft beer revolution. That was badass. Tell me the best aspect of being the chairman and or the CEO of Revolution Brewing. Yeah, we get to make beer, drink beer every day. It's a good life. I assume that you want to go to like every state and then to Canada. No, do, we don't. Do I said you? before, we don't want to be a national brewery. We opened up in 2010 as a brew pub, really restaurant focused. And we were really busy. We had lines out the door. People were really hungry for new beer in Chicago. And then we opened up the Kedzie Avenue Brewery where we're sitting today. And we opened up the Kedzie Avenue Brewery. We were really able to get our beer into stores, into other bars and restaurants across Chicago land. That was the goal, of course, of opening a production brewery. We were one of the fastest growing breweries in the country. And um, we built the revolution into a beer brand that people know and respect today. It's very humbling owning a business like this that has succeeded so well. And um, a lot of people ask me like, what is it like to have fulfilled your dreams? And uh, it's very humbling. It's like the only real thing you can say. Um, you can never have done it without my wife, the support of my wife. She was the original CFO of the business. So in that same vein, what is the ultimate vision for Revolution? One of our core values is to stay independent and brew only in Chicago. We're really proud of being located in the city of Chicago. You know, it's real expensive to build a brewery in the city of Chicago. We took a lot of risk to get this business open. We doubled down a bunch of times. I was co-signed to like tens of million dollars of debt because our ultimate goal is just to be a world-class brewery, to put out world-class beer. What's your number right now? Where do you sell oh, Revolution? I don't know. It's a, a ton. I was how, in, how many states, roughly? Yeah, I think we're at 11 states right now. And um, it's kind of changing. We just opened up Iowa and Minnesota this year in 22. Business models are changing as we speak right now. And the laws are changing. We work through the three-tier system. We sell our beer to a beer distributor who sells it to stores, bars, restaurants, just across all of our markets. And it works great for us. We were talking the other day about what is the right occasion to drink an Antihero IPA, and it's kind of like all the time. <laughs> It's our best seller by far. Antihero is about, I think it's like 40 something percent of our sales at this point in time. There was a time when it was like 60 plus percent of sales and we were at risk of just being too dependent upon one beer. And we scale up, we keep our beers relatively affordable. We want our beer to be attainable and affordable for people so they can try a bunch of different beers. We want to be the beer in people's fridge. Rock and roll, yeah, I want to see. I was about to say, you have to move. There you go. Hey, this is the hazy. Fresh off the line. Fresh off the line. Cheers. So these little things, I mean, I just assume when you're a smaller brewery, you just don't have the ability to do this. No, we, we have grown and updated this canning line probably in three or four phases over the last eight years or so. Okay. We got this about a year and a half ago. This is a cartoner. It puts six beers into a carton. And then we put the date code on the outside of it right over there. And the cartons give your beer a good look on the shelf. Yeah. They're also more sustainable than the plastic tops that we used to put on the beer. Okay. And so it was a move for sustainability and it's a move uh, for the brand, essentially. So one thing that I wanted to ask you, the, the design of these cans, the design of the, the packages, what goes into it? Because that's been one thing that I really enjoy about Revolution. Um, you, every every single beer has something unique about it. It's got a unique name, it's got a unique design. So what goes into it? Who designs it? Tell me a little bit about it. We also have a nice framework of our brands, like Hazy Hero, Anti-Hero. We use the word hero to mean IPA. So we help to convey to the customer what it is that they're buying. The packaging really helps set the expectation of the customer. They buy with their eyes. They set an expectation right then about what kind of beer they're getting. 
And when they crack that can, pour it into a glass, or just drink straight out of the can, you have to make sure that that liquid meets the expectation of what you set them up for. Wine is sold on the variety of the grape. Beer is sold on the style of beer. Like what happens when you have too many choices? I think about that a lot. Yeah. And I think people go to the brands that they're familiar with, the brands that they can easily distinguish and recognize. You know, we like to have clear branding. The characters that we put on a lot of our hero beers, the stories that we build on the cans, it's something that, and yeah, this can gives you something to look at. There's actually a bunch of hidden characters. See them right there? One, another one right there. I was about right to there. say, what is the story behind this? This one's kind of, yeah, this one's, kinda, yeah, there's a bunch this of one's tripping me out. This one is Josh. about like being trapped in the haze. It took about a year and a half to refresh every single beer we made throughout the year. Awesome. And uh, this is the second version of Hazy Hero. Yeah. Infinity Hero, brand Again. new IPA. It's kind of like halfway between Andy Hero and Hazy Hero. Uh, we're trying to make the next great cool IPA. Cool design here, cool design. It features a lot of cool hops. Hops that we have found by visiting the Pacific Northwest. How often do you come up with new beers? Like every, like is it just constant? You have to think about new designs and... Um... We'll go see the pilot system in a minute. That's where we can really experiment the most. At our brew pub, we can do some smaller batches there. But we probably sell like 100 different beers throughout the year. Four minutes, all right, you ready? Hit it. Who is a living CEO that you do not know that you admire and look up to? I had like an apple early on as a kid, so I will, Steve Jobs isn't living, but Tim Cook is, and so. Powers that be came to you and said, you can't do anything in beer anymore. You gotta choose something else. What is it? Gosh, I, I could have been a scientist. You know, my dad is a scientist. I'm very kind of science driven, and I can tell my son is becoming science driven, and I love that. I probably would have found my way into something scientific at a certain point. What did you want to be when you were growing up, when you were like 10? A second baseman for a baseball team, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Early on, I was trying to think about this. What do you do to de stress from some of the stresses you get at your job? I like getting outside. I've got a house in the Indiana Dunes. I'm giving you the ability to teleport anywhere in the world. Where are you going right now? Yeah, I've never been to New Zealand. I just got an invite. We buy hops from New Zealand and Australia, and I just got invites to, to go to both for the hop harvest out there. I've been thinking about it, but yeah, man, you watch Jurassic Park or whatever, you want to go to New Zealand. It looks pretty cool. So I got to ask a question. You're in the Canadian tuxedo. Oh, yeah. You got the beard. Some other CEOs that I've talked to are more, uh, Formal, so to speak. I bought a chainsaw a few years ago. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Why'd you do that? Just the, oh, just the oh, just because. The house in the dunes, yeah. Has anyone told you to your face like I don't like your beer? Yeah, and it's like it's not often, but it happens, and it's like it, it hurts a little bit, or it's really? like wow, it just takes you off balance for a second, and that's okay. Like I love criticism in every shape and form. A lot of our videos suck sometimes, so I'm like, we can edit. <laughs> True. All right, cheers. Oh, cheers. All right. Tell us why CEO roles can kind of be applied to anyone and running a business is not just about, you know, fitting a certain type of character. Yeah. I, first off, I've never wanted to use that title, CEO. It just comes with baggage to me. It's a little loaded. And um, I go by chairman of the party, which I came up with one day and it just kind of stuck. But yeah, like I, I also had to say like we're a brewery that's owned and run by a brewer. Right? That's how I started, that's how I got into this, actually using my hands and making beer myself. And not every brewery is like that. There are breweries that are started up by investment bankers. And they can be successful too, but that's not us. Let's go right into the 14.8% alcohol. You've got good eyesight. Yeah. Gosh. And this is after you. This is your last name. Do you want me to finish it? Clear your glass for you. I'll set it off Should to the side. Should we chug here. a beer together? We are not going to chug oh, okay. this beer. All right. No, I don't want to chug take, that I'll one. take your can too. Great. Well, so, if I chug this, this would be a problem for me for the rest of the day. I grabbed the big can, but this is Death Star or Deet Star. It's a, a play off my last name. And it's an Imperial Oatmeal Stout. It's the lead beer of our Deepwood series of our barrels that are sitting behind us. And um, we decided to do these big cans last year, and they're really fun. There you go. Thank you. Do you, have a, do you have a style of beer that you're most into in the colder months? Definitely these beers, these barrel-aged beers, stouts. Like, um, I had a crazy idea to do a summer stout this year, and like, 
I mentioned it like at a meeting and everyone was just really quiet. <laughs> it's like, okay, it's just a crazy idea. So the best beer ideas and the best beer names, they come up like when you're sitting at the bar after having a few beers and the key is to write them down in that, you know, that moment so you remember them the next day. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. It's got a nice smell to it, chocolate. Yeah, fudgy, chocolatey. Yeah. There's a balance of, you don't want too much of that burnt flavor to it. There's just enough chocolate, just enough burnt. Just can I enough, see the like, can? Oh yeah, sure. Just enough kind of like I take your molasses, Star Wars caramel. Oh yeah, have you watched Andor? I haven't yet, is it oh, good? Andor I heard it's is good. so good. I should have said that when you asked me about it. I've seen uh, Mandalorian, I've seen, shows, the, I've seen all the... Yeah, Mandalorian is cool because it's kind of like that spaghetti western out west, it's kind of slow moving. I love those styles of films. Andor is just, has such good dialogue and plot and development. It connects you into socialism, the power structures of the world, why was the rebellion formed in the first place, and um, it's been great, it was fun to watch. Josh, thanks so much for showing us around the facility. Really appreciate you, appreciate your brand too. I know a lot of my friends drink Revolution, and it was just fun learning more about you and your, your company, so thanks so much. Yeah, thanks. Um, it's been fun to talk about yeah. it. It's nice to take a little time out yeah. from the everyday activities and do this, so. Yeah. Appreciate you coming by, Will. Appreciate it. Awesome.